Welcome to Scare School and Procreate 101. In this video, we'll take a look at the basic features of Procreate, an art app for the iPad and iPhone. So let's open up the application. And as you can see, the first thing we'll see is the gallery area where you can store all your artwork. And you have some options in the top right hand corner here. If you use the select button, you can delete or duplicate images and then you can either import uh, files, other Procreate files and so on, PSD files, or you can import photographs. And if you click on the plus sign, you can create a new canvas, whether that's from a template you've already previously created, or you can click on creating a brand new one, choosing the pixel size of your image, click create. And there we go. Now, when you open up, you can spin, a turn, zoom and everything on your canvas using two fingers. And the top left corner, you have some options. Gallery will take you back to the gallery. Then you have an action setting. Uh, the add part of that, you can bring in and add photographs. And in canvas section, you have a number of things you can do here, including the drawing guide. If you click that, a drawing guide will appear and then you can edit it by clicking edit drawing guide. This gives you a number of options such as uh, 2D, isometric, perspective, symmetry. You can choose the opacity, the thickness, the grid size, and you can choose the different colors of the grid. And the perspective, you just pick your perspective points, choose the colors of them, move them around, and you also have a drawing assisted or assisted drawing button. You can also choose this on the layer you're working on. This just allows you to draw or only draw along the guide. So click done and it will become visible. On the top right, you have a color option. And here you can choose your colors from either your palette that you've previously created, or you can choose a new color via different methods. And then you've got the brushes tool, gives you a selection of brushes. You can rename these, edit these, move them around. And on the far left corner of the screen, you'll see uh, two vertical bars. They are the top one is for the size of the brush. The bottom one is for the opacity of the brush. And then below that, you have a undo and redo button. So let's choose a brush. In the layers option, you can see you've got your background layer and then you've got one layer there. And in that layer, we can click, click on it, bring up a number of choices and we can choose the drawing assist. And as I said, that mean every line you draw will be guided along the drawing guide you've set up. There we go, let's draw the shape I want. I can turn down the opacity just by clicking on the the button to the left of the tick box. I'm dragging it down there. And then I'm going to flip the canvas in the action settings. This just allows me to see it from a fresh, from a new angle. This helps to see any issues I have straight away. What's wrong with my image? It gives me a better, gives me a clear new view. I'm going to now draw the shape I want in a bit more detail. I can use the eraser button. I've got the same options as the brush button with this. I can choose the style, I can choose the size, I can choose the opacity. And now I'm gonna draw, because this shape is going to be a dice, I'm gonna draw in the little number holes. So to choose to find the center of one of the sides of my square, I'm gonna draw an X from each corner and where they meet in the middle is the center of that square. Now I've finished roughing out the general shape of my dice i'm going to click on the layer and i'm going to make it multiply the filter multiply which means this will be easier to use as a guide over the top of an underneath image hide the previous my first layer i can hide it by clicking on the tick box making it unticked makes it invisible and i create a new layer just below my multiply layer I'm going to choose the selection box on the top left corner. This gives me a number of options. Uh, one of the ones I use most often is freehand. You can either add or subtract using the freehand. So you can just draw a squiggly line, any kind of shape you want. Or 
you can use the tick box. So you can use it as by ticking, you can click the stylus and then click again and it'll draw a line between those two click points and you can draw a square like that. So then if I go into the color option, choose the color, I can then, if I click on the color tab in the top right corner and drag it across, it'll fill in my selection area. And then to uncheck the selection area, I just click on the selection button in the top left. And now I'm gonna create a second layer. I'm gonna do it the same with the other side, choose a color. And finally with the top, I'm gonna to do it again, choose a color on another layer, drag across. And now I'm gonna do a final layer to do the spots. I'm gonna use the freehand option, no clicking, just quickly drawing in the circles. Because when you drag and drop it, it'll only fill the selection you've dropped in. I'm going to just use the brush here, make it a nice big brush. And there we go. And it'll paint, I can paint in all the selection boxes at once. Uncheck the selection tool. And there we have my dice. I'm now gonna go in and just using a smaller brush on that layer of the dots, just tidy them up a bit. Now I'm going to click, if you click on the background layer, background color, you can change that. And this helps me because I want to see this image a bit clearer because it's quite a light image. I'm just going to make the background just a little darker. And if I click on the layers, I can go to the adjustments button in the top left, the button after the actions button. And you've got some number of options here. And the one I'm going to use is called hue, saturation and brightness. And this just allows me to choose the brightness of the layer. So I'm going to go along each of the section, layer sections of the dice and just correct the brightness of them just to help improve the lighting. And then I'm going to use the eraser tool to clear up the lines using the perspective guide as my guide. And I'm also going to smooth off the edges to make it look more like a dice. and fill in any parts that I need to. If you put your finger, keep your finger on hold in a particular area, it'll choose the color of that area. Now, if I click on the layers and then click out of the options merge down, 
that will merge it with the layer beneath and I can do that right up until all the parts of the dice apart from the dots are merged together and then I'm just going to use the blur tool option which like the paintbrush option and the eraser option gives you a number of brushes to choose from and you can also choose the size and your opacity I'm just going to smooth off the lines between where the corners of the dice met now if I click on a layer and I'm going to do this on the dots layer if I click on a layer and then I click alpha lock what this means is anytime I paint on this particular layer it will only paint inside the areas I've already painted so I'm just going to use this, click on, use my finger to choose a colour, choose a brush, nice and soft brush, shrunk the size, shrunk the opacity of it, and now I'm just going to put in some light into the dots to give them a bit of a 3D look. And I'm going to do the same all the way around. And I'm going to merge the dots down to make one whole layer for my dice. Now I can create a layer above it and click that as clipping mask. Wherever I paint on that clipping mask layer, it'll only be visible on the same area as that is painted on the previous, on the lower layer. So you can see I'm painting it on, I'm putting this layer on multiple, which means when I paint, it'll paint it a little bit darker and add some shadow to the underneath layer. And I can do a clipping mask and I can then choose to make it overlay which is going to brighten it up and again it will only let me paint in an area of the layer that is only painted on the original layer okay, so I'm going to use, make, use that to make the lightness and darkness And then I'm going to merge it down so it's all back down onto one layer again. Now if you swipe to the left, it gives you some options. Delete, duplicate and lock. It does exactly what it says. Lock means you can't do anything with that layer apart from see it. Duplicate means you can duplicate it. And it calls delete, delete. So I'm going to duplicate the layer. And I'm going to go and click on the transform button on the top left. This gives me a number of options, freeform, uniform, distort, warp. I can flip it, I can rotate it, I can fit it to screen. So let's have a play with that. So with my second layer, which I'm going to turn into my second dice, I'm just going to have a play with the transform options. I'm going to create another layer to create another dice and I'm going to play about with the transformations of that. Trying roughly to keep it to so it looks like it fits within the perspective grid. And I'm going to create a final dice there and I'm going to have a real go at kind of making a wacky shape. With the transform tool you can also move an object around the screen.
You can also move layers about by dragging them, by clicking and holding them, and then moving them up or down to change the layer order. I'm going to delete some previous layers. So then I'm going to choose one of the layers, one of the dice, and then I'm going to go back to the adjustments and I'm going to click on Hue and Saturation. And instead of doing the just the brightness and the darkness, I'm going to have a go with the Hue and the Saturation. I'm going to change the colour slightly. Then I'm going to go to Colour Balance, click on Colour Balance, and this lets me go into a bit more detail in the brights, the midpoints and the shadows of the particular layer. I can add more green, more magenta, more yellow, more blue and so on. So I'm just playing about with that to get a colour I'm looking for. Now if I duplicate a layer and I change the filter on it, it will affect the layer, how it looks against the layer underneath. So that's another way you can play about with the colours or the light or the brightness. So here I'm going to get some of that is close to what I want. Change the opacity of it. Then I'm going to play back the colour and saturation on that particular layer. Another thing you can do is if I click on one of the dice layer, I can then go to adjustment and go to motion blur. And I can motion it by just holding the stylus on the screen and dragging from the left to the right to increase the strength of the motion blur. And if you don't like it, you can just click the undo button. So now I'm going to have a go with just changing the color, moving it around a bit. I'm going to boost and create a new layer underneath all the other layers to use as your shadow guide. Change the opacity level of it. Change the background colour back to a, a white to better see the overall image. Get rid of the drawing guide. Clean it up a bit. and draw a background layer just to give a bit of a bit of interest to the background kick out some of the lighter areas a bit what i'm going to do now is choose to give a like a focal point i can choose to make some of the layer some of the images more out of focus to give a bit of depth and i can use that by just adjusting the gaussian blur on the other layers so i picked one dice i want to be in focus and the other ones i want to be to different degrees, slightly out of focus, just to get a bit of depth. Of course I can flip the cameras from left to right. On the share button I can share to um, anything like a JPEG, PDF, 
um, PSD file and so on TIFF, then I can choose to export out a time lapse, which is like a video of all the painting I've been doing, or I can go straight to look preferences and just if life, if I get stuck, I can click on help and click on the Procreate handbook, which has in detail everything you need to know about the application. So if you do kind of forget what you're doing or wondering about things like the different gestures you can use and so on, click on the Procreate handbook and that'll open up the handbook in your browser. And then you can click on gallery to go back to a gallery and there it is, the image you've just created. Now we're going to create a new image. We're going to choose the brush, we're going to choose the colour. We're going to rough out the shape of a character using really basic shapes. I'm going to change the opacity on that layer and create a new layer above it. Flip the canvas horizontally to give me a new view of my sketch. Zoom in a little bit and start to just put in a little bit more detail on those shapes. Flipping backwards and forwards. And then I'm going to create a new layer, put my top layer as a multiply so I can see it easier. Then I'm going to, on this new layer that's underneath the multiply layer, I'm going to use the selection tool to create some basic shapes of my character. So I'm going to take the basic head shape there. I'm going to click on remove in the selection and just remove the shape from my selection, the eyeballs. Choose a colour. Drag and drop into the selection. A bit too uh, bright there, so I'm just going to lighten it a bit. There we go. Create a new layer. Un uncheck the selection tool, check it again. I'm going to create all the hair shapes now. Oops, made a mistake, going to correct all the hair shapes now. Remove the area from his mouth. So try and break, I'm trying to break down my character into the simplest shapes, the simplest areas. Choose a colour for the hair. Drag and drop into the selection areas. And check the selection, check it again, choose a different layer, to create a different layer. I'm going to do an area now for the neck and the eyeballs. OK, 
keep your finger on, on the color, but you have to be on pen to be able to do that, to select the color layer, and then I'm gonna paint the eyeballs. Do there. Now I'm just going to do the kind of the top t-shirt view. Pick a colour, basically just any colour at the moment. This is just a block in. There we go. And select that. What I'm going to do now is go along and alpha lock all the layers, so it won't when I paint on them, it'll only paint inside the areas I've already colour blocked. And I'm just going to add one more shape, a final bit of detail. I'm going to do the select the area for the nose and the top eyelids and bottom eyelids. Again, I need the bush to be on. I use my finger to create the similar color. I'm just gonna darken it a bit and paint in that area. And that's just broken it up into the smallest shapes that I want to do at this point and alpha lock that particular layer. So now I'm going to choose a color for the lightness areas, choose a brush, and on these layers I'm now going to start to paint in some detail using some light and shade. And again, it will only paint inside the areas of that layer I've already painted. I just thought about where the light is coming from. And then using the multiplier sketch guide as my guide, I'm then going to paint on that layer just some light and shadows using some different range of colors just to add some light, to add some interest. It's all about just using the color block shapes and then going in and breaking them down into smaller shapes. Not too much detail, not doing the shapes too small at this point, but just trying to break them up into more medium sized shapes to just to give the idea of that detail, but still keeping it quite rough.
And you can use the blur tool to slowly smooth off some of those painted areas to give some smooth and sharp edges. Really that is all detail is. It's just the difference between a smooth area and a sharp area. And then just merging all the layers down together into one layer. And going in and adding some final details with a smaller brush. Unlocking the ALF on that, just so I can go outside the original blocked image, add some extra detail. Now I'm going to create some clipping masks to add some shadow and some light areas as I showed you in previous in the dice image. And then I'm going to go create a new layer behind all the layers to give like a soft shadow on the wall behind the camera. I can choose to share this image export video 
and that's it. Back to the gallery and you can see the two images we've created in Procreate. And there we have it. A quick guide on how to use Procreate. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please click the like and subscribe buttons, click on the notification bell to get notifications of the latest videos. Thank you, keep sketching, bye.